What is going on, YouTube? Justin Des back with another Pirates franchise episode here on MLB The Show 22. And today we are looking at the farm system, some of our prospects, as we do have 11 players in the top 100 prospects in all of baseball. That's the most. And we're going to start out in AAA. First guy is the pitcher on the mound, Cameron John, our fifth round pick. I think our only lefty as well, but also the grandson of Papa Rod as he gets his first strikeout of the game. Now 0-2 count. Another strikeout for him, back-to-back -back strikeout, strong start. Now he is 1-2 and two over... One and two on the year and over five runs, almost six runs per so far with his ERA. As we as he might end the side with three strikeouts in a row, but it is a deep fly ball, but at least he's not gonna allow a run. So I did call Nick Gonzalez down after the last episode. He was struggling and I just think he's personally not ready yet. He was only hitting about low 200s in the major leagues and I figured you know he's only I know he's like I believe he's only 22 23 years old so he still has some time to develop so don't uh, I think it's pointless to just throw him to the wolves and just just let him develop as it's 2-2 count now and it's going to be a fly out to left Field. So one of the other prospects that we're going to look into this is the fourth round pick, Danny Martin, the shortstop. I I really like him. Only 18 years old. He's got a very solid bat. I mean, he can play also third base and second base as he flies out to third in foul territory. But this is the guy that I'm looking at. The sixth best prospect in all of baseball. And the fourth overall pick in season one's draft, Carlos Madrano. He's a switch hitter. I think he has the potential to be a superstar. Maybe not that if I keep on swinging like that, but 267, not too bad on the year. I know it's very early on in the AAA season, but he's got the power. He's got the vision. His arm needs improvement though. But overall, I think he he's a possible call-up this year, but definitely opening day roster next year as swing and a miss. Also going to look at Alberto Castro because Josh Bell is kind of struggling and Rizzo aren't really living up to the hype as it's a grounder, but he kind of killed it a little bit in his debut in September last year. So I want to see what Cameron John can do. He did give up a triple with the first batter as it's ball one. And Triple A is not doing so hot. They are 7 and 16. They're kind of struggling big time. As it's a great catch by Diego Ramirez. And there you go, showing off the arm a little bit. Another strike to Gavin Collins, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for these young guys. I think it's going to be growing pains for our farm system as, you know, some of our youth as it's another fly ball to Diego. And he's going to try to tag up, and he gets absolutely gunned. That's what we want to see. Then another guy that we might trade, but we got him from the Mets, is Brett Beatty. And he is not doing so well. And honestly, I might get him as trade bait to get more of a now-ready prospect as he hits it deep into center. And that's going to be a ground rule double. Like I said, you know, he had a great hit there. But I'm kind of curious to see how he does. Maybe bump up his stats a little bit before it's... Because I might more than likely trade him 
it depends on what we get in the draft, but we might trade him to get some more ready now guys, guys to help us push maybe for the wild card spot. Because I like him, but I think Hayes is probably going to be the third baseman um, for the rest of this series. So to me, I just don't see him really fitting in here as it's a grounder to short. But I am excited about this catcher, uh, Daniel Valajan. Beautiful hit. But it's a fly ball, but it's hit. It was hit pretty well. But I'm thinking, you know, Rex Rivera, he's 27. He's going to get up there. I think we need to have a pretty good uh, number two catcher, possibly a DH, you know, to kind of take the load off at least catching for Henry Davis. So I, I think he could be the guy. As we're back up at the top of the order with Nick Gonzalez. One and one, but I don't know. I might use also Nick as as a trade bait because honestly, we're at a I think we're at a weird spot where I think we might contend as it is a ball into the gap, and that's going to be good for extra bases. Nick Gonzalez drives in the first run of the game. It's Danny Martin's up to bat, and you know I I think he's good trade bait. As questionable call, but I have high hopes for Danny Martin. I think he was a steal for a fourth round pick. Batting 260, which isn't too bad. Ooh, that was just really early. But he's more of a contact hitter, and his power will be there, but what really separated him is it's a bloop. As we show Carlos Medrano, but what really separates Martin, you know, was his vision. He had, I mean, I'm not using him very well, but he was one of the more disciplined guys in the draft. As Medrano misses, and he, he had a good spring training. I mean, he only had one RBI, two, two home runs, one RBI, excuse me, but he hit the ball pretty well, almost 300. So we're back to see Cameron John. I kind of want to see how he does in terms of getting out of jams. Runners on the corners. He does have two outs. Because to me, that's what's going to make or break a pitcher. Is how he can handle runners in scoring position, the situation, whatnot. I think he gains their confidence as he strikes them out, gets out of the inning, protects that 1-1 one, one, one run lead. So we're going to show Danny Martin again. I, as he takes ball one, I, I really like him. I, I really do. I hit very well with him in AAA. He put, I mean, not AAA, spring training. He really kind of blew me away. I mean, he played almost every single spring training game. As because he can play third base, he can play second base, and there's rumors that he might be willing to play the outfield. Although he's a great shortstop, I think he's willing to take any position in order to get up to the major leagues as quickly as possible. So we're going to show Madrano again as so Cameron John does give up a solo shot. So he's going to have the no decision, but really besides that one run, he allowed a couple of hits, but besides that, he had a pretty good outing. I can't complain too much about him. So Cameron is still in the game. Diego Ramirez hit a home run. Let's see if he can have a strong eight innings. And I will say, I will give credit to the guys that we drafted. They might not be the best overall guys. Um, as that is a horrible weak arm that's what we need to work on with Madrano but they may not have the best control these pitchers that we've drafted but they all have really good stamina like he almost has 100 pitches and he still has a good amount of the bar left and this 
And it's going to be a ground out, and he's going to have eight strong innings. As we are going to show Danny Martin's last at bat of the game, we are probably we are going to kind of look into more of some of these guys in Triple A, and I believe we have a guy or two in Double A in this episode as well that I want to kind of take a look at. But definitely Martin is one of the guys that I have high hopes for, or think he's going I don't think he's going to be a star but he definitely could as that was just a terrible swing by me and of course Raul Vina the closer last year who probably would have been called up last year if he also did not get injured he got injured most of last year but he was one of our better just pitchers in general and I'm excited for him I want to see what he can do uh, we did sign Chapman for two years, but to kind of be the mentor of Raul, you know, Raul basically took majority of spring training close games to kind of get, you know, MLB hitter ready. And so that that's what we're kind of doing. I, I hope he can be our closer for the future, but we don't know. He is very young still. As we are down to the final out, Raul Vina has pitched nine pitches. I mean, he had a lot of saves in spring training. He was very control under control. That didn't really give up a lot of hits either. Um, he had like six or seven saves in spring training. As it's a grounder to Derek Norris and... We get the ball game and Cameron John picks up his second win of the season. So in eight innings pitched, he had six hits, nine strikeouts, which equals six and nine. Nice. Two walks and one earned run. Diego Ramirez did have a home run in an RBI. Nick Gonzalez had a base hit as well in an RBI. Other than that, not a lot of hits. First guy we're gonna play our lock in this episode is the fourth overall pick, Carlos Medrano. Uh, he is batting 256, one RBI, 73 overall. He's kind of just all around pretty solid for the most part. I really want to get that arm better. 48 arm, I don't think that's going to cut it in the outfield, but let's hop into it. So we're going to start on the road. Nick Gonzalez is at first. Danny Martin's been kind of struggling. Um, he has the cold uh, little frost thing, but... I, I'm i really excited for him. I know I've said it a lot of times, but I think he was the best overall player in the top five. I did also, and I will show a little bit later in the episode, I did edit some of the draft picks, and that is a deep fly ball. First home run of the season, and we get a 2 nothing lead. What an absolute shot by Madrano. And that is the reason why we drafted him fourth overall. Because now Danny Martin's on board now. As it's a foul ball. It's a 5 nothing lead. But I'll go into more detail about the other top five picks in last year's draft. But basically my mindset is, you know, I, I want to make some draft classes pretty good. Some draft classes, eh. And then maybe a prospect or two be like generational. Because to me, they're just all like bland and some of them may not even get to the majors. But I don't know. I think it's realistic to have some draft classes be like, okay, they have a once in a generation type of talent. And then there's others where it's like, it's just very solid. And there's a lot of blue chips in last year's draft as we take a ball that, you know, I figured their blue chip prospects, their overall needs to be a little bit better than what it actually is. As it is a fly ball, they got us. Just missed that ball too, because I think that was going to be crushed. Joe Rock is making his season debut as we got him from the Rockies and Medrano. Easy, end the inning. As it's now a seven to nothing lead. And I think this also helps that he's a switch hitter. Deep fly ball. Is he going to have back-to-back? -back? No, he is not. I thought for a second it was going to be gone, but it is not. 
but we're back out on the field. Joe Rock pitching kind of a gem. As that is going to be a routine fly out. Not routine, but I guess more an easy route back again in, in the field. Really, the only thing I'm worried about is his arm. He's got the bat. He's got the speed. It's just he's got to work on that arm strength. And, you know, other than that, he I think he's a five-tool phenom because he's got the speed, too. As we go to the top of the seventh. It's another fly ball. As it's a 7-2 game, Joe Rock's still in the game. Easy. 7-5, they have uh, they cut the lead a little bit. Maybe we can extend it. As he gets a single, like he's hitting the ball well. Like I'm not even mad about the flyouts because he's hitting the ball very well. Does have speed. I'm going to see that speed. Well, maybe not because it's a walk. Nick Gonzalez hit two home runs for three RBIs. We had a home run, two RBIs, and we scored twice. And then all of our hits were runs, so we had a heck of a game. So the next player focused guy is Danny Martin, the shortstop. Deep fly ball. He's kind of struggling a little bit, but, you know, I'm not worried. He's 18. He's young. You know, most 18-year-olds are playing double-A, single-A ball, and this guy's in triple-A. So, you know, there's going to be growing pains with him. But not just him, but just a lot of people, as it's, a, it's fielding. I'm not worried. He's a great fielder. He, I think he also has the potential to be a five-tool phenom. Power is a work in progress, but division in the context there. And he's got pretty good speed as well. But what really blew the Pirates away was how patient he was. And I have to be patient with him. Sometimes it's not just him, it's me. But as a 3 1 count, and is he going to beat it out? He will. He gets a single. Huge, huge thing. That's how to get a rhythm. Now, he does not have Carlos Madrano speed, only 70. But still, he's he's got the speed. As it's a walk, we're back fielding. 3-2 lead, Omaha does have. Jaden Hill, who was also part of the Joe Rock trade in Colorado, He's kind of struggled as Nick Gonzalez. He's going to have one. Almost a double play, but not there. And Martin is up. Not it. 244 batting average. I think he has one RBI. That's a... F oh... Man, for a second I thought you you had me. You had me there, dog. Deep fly ball. And it's off the wall, and that's going to be an RBI double. It's nine. Well, it's gonna be nine to oh. Did he go? He did, so it's gonna be nine to three. RBI double for Danny Martin, his third of the season. And that is why I like him a lot. as he advances the runner, Medrano, but that's why I like him. I mean, I think his power is gonna get there eventually, but he's just a great hitter. Just 
has a great knack for the ball. As it's a 3-12 to game, uh, Daniel Espinoso, who's one of our better pitching prospects, is now in. But Martin's going to take care of this. End the inning, I guess, stop the damage. We have a runner on. Two for three on the day. That is going to be a fly out. But now, top nine, bases loaded. No outs. Let's see what Danny can do. And he somehow lost his sleeve in all of this. And cannot get the double play, but he gets an RBI. No, never mind. He didn't lose his sleeve. I don't know why I thought it was on his other one. But I guess it was more of a fielder's choice. But, hey, he gets two, a two-RBI game. That's not bad. As Madrano gets another run in, we cut the deficit by half, but it's probably not going to do anything. We finished two for five on the day, two RBIs in a run. Beatty had three, went three for three, three for three, two RBIs in a run. Madrano had an RBI. Jaden Hill got absolutely killed. Eight hits, seven earns, three strikeouts, and only basically didn't even get through the third. But to check on the MLB quick, as we did beat San Francisco to start off May, lost, but we won two straight. Michael King, not doing too bad, as Weber hit a home run. Fitzgerald had a couple of RBIs. He's been hitting well, and Plezak finally gets his first win of the season. As we crush the Padres, Reynolds, Rizzo, and Cruz all went yard. Vincent and Reynolds had doubles and just a lot of RBIs. We'd love to see it. A six run, nine inning. So the last guy we're going to see is our third round pick. Our best pitcher, 6'4", mammoth of a man, and Chase Burns as he gets a grounder first pitch. More like a fly out or line drive to uh, Nick Gonzalez. But I have high hopes for him. He is our best overall pitcher in last year's draft class as it is a D fly ball to center field, but it looks like Mr. Chase has gotten it and two away. He is the biggest of our draft classes, big 6'4 guy. He has the highest potential, and that is a deep fly ball to Madrano, and he's got to score this first. As it's a 1-2 count, he's got some good stuff. He's got good stamina. I just think he needs better control, honestly, because he's got the velocity. It's just he just does not have control of his balls. Pause. As that is his second strikeout of the inning and the game. He pitched very well in spring training. I know he's one and two right now, but again, it's growing pains with those guys. This is a deep fly ball, but Madrano's got it to end the second. Honestly, I know we don't have a lot of pitching prospects, but to me, he is the closest to getting called up out of any of the pitchers we have in our system. I think he's got the best potential, just in general, as he gives up a hit. More than likely going to be a double. Now let's see what he'll do. I mean, this is part of pitching. You're going to give up hits, but it's how you... Your confidence, your composure after giving up hits. What will you do? And really, that's all I'm looking for. I'm not looking for, you know, these guys to be absolutely perfect, absolute gems. I mean, his first start in AAA, he did almost throw a uh, perfect game into eight innings so he he did kind of have a uh great start to triple a as they're probably going to tag up but since he's uh kind of just been eh but i mean that's just also a phenomenal way to start your career um right out of the gate it's kind of hard to duplicate that but i mean it is promising As it's probably going to give up a run. As runner will score. And they take the one nothing lead. But he has been dealing. He has three or four strikeouts already in this game. 
He's kind of a, and he throws a hundred mile fastball. So like I, I, he's got all the pieces to be. I think he could be a potentially number two, maybe an ace. But I feel like you know he might be a very good number two hitter at I mean pitcher. Three, he probably would be fine at first, but I think he can peak to a number two to an ace. Honestly, that's how good I think he is. And the fact that we got him in the third round is an absolute steal. And he's got good stuff on his jump, like his pitches. I mean, I say that and he almost hits him with a curveball, but like he's got a good, he's got a good sinker, his fastball. I honestly, I, I mean, I'm gushing over him. And it's a strikeout looking like he's just, I, he, he has the potential to be a strikeout machine. And still one nothing, not really getting the run support that, you know, Chase Burns needs. But it is what it is. Maybe it's just a pitcher's duel. And we've only pitched 40 pitches through almost five innings, which is really good. I believe he has the best stamina out of all of our young. Like, he could go deep. I think his stamina is like 90, I'm pretty sure. As he gives up a single. Second hit of the game. So he has 75 break on his pitches, 99 velocity, and 93 stamina. So those are the only things that really kind of separate him. I mean, his control's almost 50, but really he just is a hard throwing dude. He just he just throws the ball hard, which makes sense with his frame that he has. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised. Deep fly ball. That is probably gonna be a home run. No, into the gap, RBI double. Chase Burns, kind of in a pickle now. You know, and, and I do understand, I'm not gonna take, you know, this, you know, the stats with a Saint Salt. Because I do get most of these guys probably should be in double A, as that's probably gonna knock in two. They probably should be in double A maybe single A, but since our farm system is kind of bad and just in general, we just have all these guys just pushed up to triple A when probably they, some of them should not be in triple A. As Madrano is going to get to it, two way. So yeah, I, I think the fact that, you know, they're not gonna have the best stats because overall wise they're not in the right competition, but you know, we also you know, sometimes you gotta struggle in order to get better. Like Michael Weber, he struggled huge last year. And now he's slowly become one of our best rotational guys. Guess that's the end of the fifth. So we're in the top of the seven, still no runs. I mean, besides a couple of hits, Chase has been lights out. He's got like six or seven strikeouts. The pitch count has been pretty low. The fact that it's 70 pitches into the seventh inning is kind of impressive. Even though I'm not super worried with the Stanima, but it, to, to me, it's still very impressive that he's that he could do that. And I don't know. To me, it's 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 very promising that you know he's this young and he already has great Stanima and velocity and kind of break in his. Balls, pause. So he did get removed from the game in the eighth inning, but I figured, you know, 
Maybe we could try to win this ball game as Diego Ramirez gets a great hit up the middle. He's got the bat, man. I am very close. He might get called up a little bit sooner than September, maybe by all-star break if he keeps on hitting like this. Seven innings, four hits. Literally three out of the four hits were runs. Didn't give up a home run. Seven strikeouts, seven innings. I think he had a great, great outing. Diego Ramirez had a triple and a single. Danny Martin had a couple of hits as well. But other than that, we couldn't get anything to go. We did move Robert Fitzgerald up to run the sixth spot with some of the lineups. And then we're also taking him out of some and putting, you know, Josh Bell out there. Maybe, maybe Michael Weber or Lonnie White. But he has been killing it so far. 30 hits, 5 home runs, 14 RBIs. He does have 17 strikeouts, but to me, he's hitting over 330. A 3.96, almost 4 on base percentage. Slugging 68. OPS over 1,000. Um, you know, he has 100... How many stolen bases does he have? Hold on. Oh, he only has one. But still... Even though he's going down one, to, I mean, he is just coming off a little bit of an injury. But to me, easily one of the stars of this team. So we did make a trade to the Orioles per Mark Schnell. If you remember the draft episode, he was the number one overall pick. He, Him and Madrano were the top two guys on my draft board. I didn't think that we had a shot to get him, but... Apparently, it was easy to get him. So we traded Quinn Prester for him, and we also traded Tyler Malone to the Reds to get one of their younger catchers as well. For context, this is Quinn Prester overall. I mean, would, have I, would I have made the trade? No, but I understand why they did. He's two years older, yes, but he is better overall, and he has a little bit of MLB experience as well. Again, I don't think it's too bad of a trade, but I would not personally make the trade. But let's get into the other top picks as well, see how they're doing from last year's draft. So Tom Gorman, obviously Mark went to us. We got traded. He he I did not change him at all. Tom Gorman, I did bump him up a little bit because he was like a 50. And to me, I get sometimes, you know, draft picks are gonna be busts, but I don't know to me if like your A plus potential and you're a blue chip guy I, and you know also to possibly speed up his process of getting to the major leagues you know i think you got to be better so i did bump him up to a 64 i i just personally think he, he just needed that bump a little bit and i and you know for future drafts i might keep it but to me realistically you're not going to be a 50 over all and be the second overall pick the next pick we go with richie rivera we left him because he was a 67 overall. He's not doing too bad in AAA. Um, he kind of, I was flip-flopping between him and Madrano in terms of outfield. But I'm kind of glad we got Madrano because I think he's just the better overall player. And obviously, we have Carlos Madrano. He did drop one overall. I don't know why. But 74 overall as the fourth overall pick. Not too shabby, I would say. Um, you know, he does have 24 hits. 19 strikeouts, not the best. 258, pretty solid. Um, you know, 24 hits to 19 strikeouts, not the greatest, not the best. One home run, which we hit earlier this episode. Five RBIs. Again, you know, it's still early in the AAA season, but I don't think he's doing too bad. He's holding his own. And the guy after us, Julian Cabrera. I bumped him up to a 60. He was like in the like in low 50s. And again, to me, I think if you're A plus and a top five pick, you shouldn't be 50 overall. Um, you know, solid bat, but he's mostly going to be a defensive guy, it looks like. And he's not doing too bad in double A as well. And the ninth pick in the the eighth pick, excuse me, in the draft, who has ninety nine potential, who I think could be an absolute stud in this year's draft. A little bit mad that I somewhat didn't go after him or didn't see his potential, 
uh, Alfonso Wayne. I bumped him up. He was like a 48. So to me, again, I think at least top five. I didn't make him as good as the top five, you know, at least 60 or above, like 65-ish, roughly. Um, but, you know, I think he's better than a 48. You know, 99 potential, you got to be better than that. And he's... Not doing too shabby down at, oh, never, uh, he's doing solid down at double A. Probably wondering why I'm going over the top picks from last year's draft because next episode's going to be the draft episode. I know, I don't know, I, I kind of like the format. I might switch it up a little bit, um, but, you know, I like the first two episodes and then go into the draft because it's my favorite part of the entire series, you know, drafting prospects. Um, but I, I know I did also say that I'm going to play it a little bit more with this team as well. But I also want to start to get some of you guys, either the, the subscribers or my followers on YouTube, which is down in the link, my socials, even Instagram. So then it's a little bit more interactive. So then you could see where you go and then also this and that. And Giancarlos Rose, you know, he seems like he could be a stud. We are scouting him right now. Um, when I first scouted him, he was like 80 potential. He was one of the higher overall guys. But, um, but that's why I kind of talked also about last year's draft picks, what they're doing, and, you know, kind of looking at our drafts because the next episode will be the draft special or in two. I have not decided, but definitely really, really soon the draft is coming, and I want to make sure that I get, you know, guys in so then you can see and make this series a little bit more personal for you guys instead of just me. But that's going to be the end of the episode. I appreciate you guys. Drop a like on the video, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe. But until next video, you guys have a good one. Peace.